Okay, x equals 3, y equals 5. By how much does the value of 3x2, now that x is a variable, it's not a multiplication. 3x2 minus, that minus is a minus sign, 2y. By how much does that exceed the value of 2x2 minus 3y? So those are the two expressions. So what I've done is I write 3 and then times and then x, x is 3, so 3 times 3 and then times 2, and then minus 2, and then times the y, y would be 5. And over here we got 2, x, x is 3, times 3, times 2, minus 3, times 5, because y is 5. Now I figure these out on a calculator, okay? 3 times 3, times 2, minus 2, times 5, okay? That's 8, and then... 2 times 3 times 2 minus 3 times 5, that's negative 3. So if you're finding out how much does one exceed the other, you're subtracting. It's not 5, though, okay? If I'm subtracting a negative number, okay, I need to really add the positive, and that gives me 11, okay? It exceeds it by 11 units. Okay, and the next one, x equals 5, y equals 7. By how much does the value of 4x5 minus 5x exceed the value of 2x4 minus 3y? So let's replace the variables. So we got 4x, and then x is 5, so times 5, and then 5 times 5, and then a minus sign. There are no negatives in this problem unless I end up with 1 times, and then the x is 5, so a lot of 5s there. Okay, and here we got 2x, so times 5, and then 4 times 4, minus 3y, so minus 3, and it's times 7. Okay, so here I got 4 times 5, times 5, minus 5, times 5, and that's 75. Minus, okay, how much does it exceed it? 2 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 7. Whoops, that was wrong. 2 times 5 times 4 minus 3 times 7. I got 19. So again, you're taking 75 minus 19. That's 56, okay? Okay, what's the di x is 6, y is 8. Difference means you're subtracting in the value of 3, 6x3 minus 5y and 5x4 minus 2y. So 6 times x times 6 times 3 minus 5 and then y is 8. And over here you got 4 and then x, so times 6 times 5 minus 2y and then y is 8. Okay? So on one side we got 6 times 6 times 3 minus 5 times 8, and that's 68. And over here you got 4 times 6 times 5 minus 2 times 8. That's 104. Now you want to flip the subtraction so the bigger number comes first when figuring these problems. So 104 minus 68. Okay, you want the larger value to be subtracted from. Okay, I got 36, because a negative is not going to make sense with these, okay? Okay, pause the video, do the two on the back. Okay, now this one's pretty easy. The length of a rectangle is four more than twice the width. Write an equation for the length. Okay, so length equals, and I put the width over here. That's going to have an operation or two with it. 4 more, well that means plus 4, and then you also got twice. Now that's a multiplication operation of 2, and you want to put that in front of your W. Okay, the length of a rectangle is 3 more than its width. Write an equation for the length. So length equals width, but then I got 3 more. That's the only operation, so it's plus 3. Okay, length of a rectangle 7 less than 3 times its width. Write an equation for the length. Okay, so length equals, I put W here, 7 less, so that would be minus 7. 
and three times means I put a three multiplier in front of the W. You don't take the seven times three on these problems. Okay, pause the video, do two on the back. Watch out for twice, that means multiply by two. Okay, which of the following expressions has an even integer value for all integers A and C, regardless if they're even or odd? Okay, now you don't know what A and C are here. So what you do is you look at the coefficients in front, 8 and 2, those are both even, okay? Has an even integer value. Okay, that's two odds, that's an even and an odd, okay? Put a 1 there, okay? That's an odd and an even, that's an odd and an even. Okay. Now, the ones that have the same value, listen to this, okay? Because this is important to get, okay? The ones that have the same, odd or even, so we got two evens, so that's going to be an even value at the end, no matter what A and C are, okay? You can pick any number for A and C, and that will be an even result. Okay, here they're both odd, so I circle that. Here I got an even and an end and an odd, so that'll be odd. Okay, I don't circle that. Odd even. Okay, odd even. So it's just these two. Remember, they have to have the same coefficients. Eight and two are both even. Three and three are both odd. They got to be the same. Okay, here four and three odd or even, so it wouldn't be those. Even, even, so circle. Odd, even, can't be. Even, even odd, I should say. And that's one, so that's odd, odd. Okay, so we are going to circle that one. Okay. Odd, even, so cross that out. Odd, odd, so I circle that. Even, even, they, as long as they're the same, as far as even and odd goes. And then even, odd, so that can't be, okay. Because here's what I do, okay? It doesn't matter what. Because if you add an odd to an odd, okay, like this, it's even. If you add an even to an even, it's even. But if you add an odd, an even to an odd, that's going to be odd. And then the rest of that crap is kind of irrelevant, okay? So as long as I have the same kind of number in front, okay? So again, odd, even. Can't be that. Odd, odd, because that's one. Okay. So that would be. Okay. Odd, even, so that would not be. And then even, even, that would be. As long as you, if you have two odds or two evens, you circle it in front. The number, the coefficients, the numbers in front. Pause the video and do the last one. And the, do the first one. I didn't circle it. Okay, find the greater value. The variables represent a positive real number, okay? Now, when you're finding the greater value, they're asking you about x or w. Here, they're asking about w or x. Here, x and m. Now, since y is in both equations, I can fill that y in with any number I want, both of them. So let's pick 10, okay? So 10 is equal to 0.25x, and 10 is equal to 3w. You can pick any number you want, because y is constant. Now I divide by 0 0.25, and 10 divided by 0 0.25 is 40. So 40 is x. Here I divide by 3, and 10 divided by 3 is 3.3, .3, repeating. Now 40 is larger, and that's x, so x is a larger value. Okay, again, let's replace each y with a number. Let's go 10 again. And then I solve each equation by dividing. Okay, so 10 divided by 1.23. Okay, 8.13 equals w. And over here I divide by 1.01. And 10 divided by 1.01 .01 is 
Okay, nine nine point ninety. Well, obviously, x again is the higher value, so x is it. Okay, x and m. Okay, so again, replace the y. It doesn't matter what number you use as long as it's the same number. Because y, once I see y, y can y would be a constant. And then divide and see which one's bigger. So divide by 8, divide by 4. So 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. And then 10 divided by 8 is 1.25. So obviously x again holds the greater value. Okay. So pause the video. But before you do that, put q-m and circle the one that's higher, z-m. Okay, the next one, simple probability. Find the probability a number selected from a list will be even. So, probability is a ratio. You have one, two, three, four, five numbers to pick from. Now, how many of those are even? Well, four is even, 16 is even, three is odd, four is even, and eight is even. So, that's a four-fifths probability. Good, good odds, okay? Here you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So two's even, three's odd, seven's odd, twelve's even, fifteen's odd, twenty-two's even, seventy-two's even, one oh eight's even. Okay, that's five even numbers, so that's a five eighths probability. Okay, you got one, two, three, four, five, six evens. You got odd, odd, even, even. And even on 6. So that would be 3, 6. But that's actually 1 half. Because that, that reduces by its greatest common factor, 3. These have a GCF of 3. So you reduce. 1 half. Okay, pause the video. Do the 2 on the back. Okay, and then finally the GPA. Okay, you've always wondered how GPA is actually calculated. Well, here's how. So let's say a high school kid, 70% of the credits he got were A's, 20% were B's, and 10% were C's. Now an A's worth 4 points, a B's worth 3 points, a C's 2, and a D is 1. Find the GPA. It's really simple. You make the percentages into decimals, so 0 0.70, 0 0.20, 0 0.10. Then you multiply each one by what they're worth. So times 4, times 3, and times 2. Okay, so 0.70 times 4 is 2.8, and then 0 0.6, and then 0 0.2. Then I add these together, okay, and that's going to be a 3.6 GPA. We add them up at the end. We add the three products. Okay, here you got 60%, 0 0.60 or 0 0.6, 0 0.20, 0 0.10 or 0. Point, and then times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Fs don't even get calculated because that's why they call it no credit. So it's 2.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. Add those up, and that's going to be 3.3 is the GPA on that. Okay, last one. 0 0.30, 0 0.50, 0 0.10, 0 0.10. So times 4, 3, 2, and 1. So I find those products, and that's a 1.2. That's a 1.5. That's a 0 0.2. You multiply them. That's a 0 0.1. Use a calculator if you don't can't do it mentally. So you add those up, and that's a 3, 3 whole. So the GPA here is 3.0. If it's a whole number, you usually express it with a 0.0.